So, when does the Bible first introduce us to Jacob? Well, that happens in Genesis 25. This is the moment when Jacob's story begins to unfold. His mother, Rebecca, was expecting twins, and an interesting event occurred within her womb, which she couldn't understand. She sought divine guidance from the Lord, who revealed a profound message. God informed Rebecca that the struggle between her unborn children was a foreshadowing of something significant. It signified the birth of two nations, with Jacob destined to become the forefather of Israel and Esau of Edom, according to Genesis 36. This was just the beginning of a remarkable narrative. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. God bless you. What's fascinating is that, right from the womb, Jacob and Esau's differences were evident. Esau was the elder twin, while Jacob was the younger. Genesis 25 verse 23 describes the family line of Isaac, Abraham's son, and how Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, Rebekah, who was initially barren. It was the Lord's answer to their prayers that led to the twins' unique destinies. The Bible tells us that the two brothers were constantly at odds. Esau, a skilled hunter, was a man of the open country, while Jacob preferred the comforts of their home and the tents. Isaac had a taste for wild game and favored Esau, while Rebekah held a special place in her heart for Jacob. The tale takes an intriguing turn when Jacob, one day, cooked a stew, and Esau, coming home famished, made an unusual request. Esau said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew, I'm famished. This is why he was also called Edom. Jacob's response was unexpected, he offered to give Esau the stew, but on one condition. He wanted Esau's birthright in exchange. Esau, too hungry to think clearly, agreed, and they made a deal. Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew, and in that moment, Esau despised his birthright. Now, when we consider Jacob's character in the Bible, it's essential to acknowledge the theme of trickery and deception that runs through his life story. From the very beginning, his name became synonymous with cunning and craftiness. His most infamous deceptions were directed towards his twin brother, Esau, as he tricked him into giving up his birthright. One instance of Jacob's cunning is found in Genesis 25 verses 29 to 34. Esau, returning from the wilderness, was famished, and Jacob took advantage of the situation. He said to Esau, first, sell me your birthright. Esau, not thinking straight due to his hunger, replied, what good is the birthright to me? Jacob pressed him to swear an oath, sealing the deal. He then gave Esau bread and lentil stew in exchange for the birthright. Furthermore, the Bible recounts how Jacob, with the help of his mother, Rebekah, managed to deceive their father, Isaac, and receive his blessing, which rightfully belonged to Esau. In Genesis 27, Isaac, whose eyesight had deteriorated with age, called for Esau, intending to bless him before his death. However, Rebekah overheard the conversation and decided to intervene. 
Rebecca instructed Jacob to impersonate Esau by bringing her two young goats for a special meal. Jacob expressed concern about the plan, fearing that his father would recognize his smooth skin and curse him. However, Rebecca assured him, saying, let the curse fall on me, just do as I say. The plan was set into motion. Jacob prepared a meal just the way his father liked it, and Rebecca put Esau's clothes on Jacob. She even covered his hands and neck with goatskins to mimic Esau's hairiness. Jacob went to his father, and the deception unfolded. Isaac questioned how he had been so swift in hunting the game, and Jacob responded that the Lord had granted him success. Isaac, suspicious but convinced by the voice and the taste of the meal, blessed Jacob, thinking he was blessing Esau. This act of deception would have far-reaching consequences in Jacob's life. So, there you have it, Jacob's intriguing story, marked by trickery, cunning, and the pursuit of blessings. It's a tale of complex family dynamics and sibling rivalry, and it sets the stage for the larger narrative of Jacob's life in the Bible. Now, let's dive deeper into Jacob's journey in the Bible. As we left off, Jacob had just received his father's blessing through a cunning ruse, leaving his elder brother, Esau, seething with anger. Fearing for his life, Jacob fled from his brother's wrath and embarked on a journey that would take him to unexpected places. As he traveled to his mother's homeland, he experienced a remarkable encounter. At a certain point, Jacob saw angels and a ladder reaching up to heaven. This divine sight left an indelible mark on his journey, foreshadowing the importance of his role in the biblical narrative. Jacob eventually arrived in Haran, where he met his uncle Laban. Their first encounter, described in Genesis 29, is quite intriguing. Jacob stumbled upon a well in a field where three flocks of sheep were resting. He soon learned that this well was the source of water for the flocks, and there was a significant stone covering the well. Inquiring about his whereabouts, Jacob asked the shepherds, My brothers, where are you from? They replied, We are from Haran. He then asked them if they knew Laban, the grandson of Nahor, who was Abraham's brother. Indeed, they knew him, and Jacob learned that Laban and his family were doing well. Then, something captivating happened. Jacob's cousin Rachel appeared on the scene, tending her father Laban's sheep. This chance meeting ignited a sequence of events that would significantly shape Jacob's life. As the sun still hung high in the sky, Jacob suggested that the flocks be watered early so they could return to their pastures. However, the other shepherds hesitated, explaining that they needed to wait until all the flocks had gathered. Jacob, driven by his interest in Rachel, decided to take matters into his own hands. He rolled away the stone from the well and watered Laban's flock. The moment Jacob saw Rachel, Laban's daughter, he was overcome with emotion. He kissed her and wept, a scene filled with genuine affection. Jacob introduced himself as Rebekah's son, Laban's nephew, and Rachel ran to inform her father about the arrival of their relative. Laban, upon hearing the news, rushed to greet Jacob, embracing and kissing him. 
he brought Jacob to his house and inquired about the details of his journey. Laban acknowledged the familial connection, saying, You are my bone and my flesh, and Jacob stayed with him for a month. After this initial period, Laban proposed a deal to Jacob. He asked Jacob what his wages should be for working for him. Jacob, captivated by Rachel's beauty, made an unconventional proposal. He offered to serve Laban as a hired worker for seven years in exchange for the privilege of marrying Rachel, Laban's younger daughter. Laban agreed to the terms, and Jacob embarked on seven years of dedicated service for the love of his life, Rachel. Those years passed swiftly for Jacob, driven by his deep affection for her. Finally, the day arrived when Jacob asked Laban to fulfill his promise. In an attempt to celebrate this joyous occasion, Laban prepared a wedding feast with wine. However, in a twist of fate, Laban, perhaps purposefully, took Jacob by surprise. Instead of bringing Rachel to him, Laban brought Leah, his older daughter. Jacob, in the darkness of the night, consummated his marriage with Leah, believing she was Rachel. As dawn broke, the shocking reality hit Jacob. He confronted Laban, questioning the deception and betrayal he had experienced. Laban defended himself, citing a local tradition that dictated the older daughter's marriage before the younger. Laban then proposed a new deal, if Jacob completed Leah's week of celebration, he could also marry Rachel, but in return, he had to work for Laban for another seven years. Jacob, despite his disappointment and confusion, agreed to these terms. He fulfilled Leah's week of celebration, during which she bore him children. Finally, Jacob received Rachel as his second wife, and their complicated journey continued. Jacob's feelings for Rachel remained strong, and he loved her more than Leah. This complex web of relationships and emotions would shape Jacob's path as he navigated the challenges of life, love, and family in the pages of the Bible. After working tirelessly for Laban, Jacob accumulated a substantial portion of Laban's herd, which he attributed to God's protection and his own intelligence. But the time had come for Jacob to receive a divine message. God instructed him to return to his father's land, which meant he would have to confront his brother Esau. This reunion was fraught with uncertainty. Would Esau's long-standing anger and desire for vengeance still burn after all these years? Understanding Jacob's story means recognizing the multitude of challenges he faced. Despite God's promise to Jacob that he would father not just a great nation but a company of nations, Jacob was a man filled with fear and anxiety. The looming encounter with his brother Esau, at this critical juncture in his life, was about to put all of Jacob's struggles and fears to the test. Fleeing Laban's wrath and leaving behind his father-in-law's treatment, Jacob's next challenge was to meet his enraged brother Esau, who had vowed to kill him. In a desperate bid to appease Esau and protect his family, Jacob devised a clever plan. He assembled a caravan of gifts, and with his wives and children, he set out across the river Jabbok. It was an exhausting journey, during which he was stripped of all his worldly possessions, 
leaving him physically depleted and alone in the desert wilderness, facing certain death. In that moment, he realized he had no control over his fate. On the banks of the Jabbok River, with his father-in-law behind him and Esau ahead, Jacob found himself in a profound struggle. Throughout his life, Jacob had battled against the odds from the moment of his birth when he contended with Esau. He had also faced challenges in his dealings with Laban. But just before confronting Esau, Jacob encountered the most intense and pivotal struggle of his life. In the dark of night, Jacob was visited by an angelic stranger, a divine being. The struggle was unlike any other he had experienced. It was a wrestling match not with a human opponent, but with God himself. As described in Genesis 33, Jacob was left alone by the Jabbok River, and he wrestled with this mysterious figure until daybreak. Jacob's physical exhaustion and the realization that he could not overpower this divine presence led to a significant moment in the struggle. The stranger touched the socket of Jacob's hip, causing it to be wrenched. Yet, Jacob persisted, refusing to let go without receiving a blessing. The stranger asked for Jacob's name, to which he replied, Jacob. In response, the stranger declared that Jacob's name would be changed to Israel. This name change signified a profound transformation in Jacob's character. His lifelong perseverance and determination were now being acknowledged and harnessed for a greater purpose. This transformation was significant, as Jacob's name had always been synonymous with his character throughout the story. A name change was a powerful symbol of authority and transformation, signifying that Jacob was willing to submit to God's demands. In this instance, the new name Israel represented a change in character, highlighting the evolution of one of Jacob's traditional strengths, his unwavering perseverance. In this pivotal moment, Jacob demonstrated his willingness to yield to God's will, and this shift in attitude worked in his favor. Jacob was now willing to go to great lengths to secure God's blessing, even if it meant losing in order to win. The episode sheds light on the nature of Jacob's relationship with God, where submission and transformation are central themes. As the episode concluded, the stranger refused to disclose his name, and Jacob was left with a deep understanding that he had encountered God face to face. His life was spared, but he bore the physical mark of the encounter as he limped due to his wrenched hip. This encounter with the divine had left an indelible mark on Jacob's journey and character. The story of Jacob's wrestling with God is a profound illustration of the themes of submission, transformation, and the enduring strength of the human spirit. Jacob's journey, marked by both external and internal struggles, would continue to shape the narrative of the Bible in remarkable ways. Jacob's wrestling match with God holds profound lessons that resonate with us today. First and foremost, Jacob's encounter with God teaches us about the importance of seeking forgiveness and relying on God's mercy. Jacob understood the weight of his past actions, particularly his wrongdoings toward Esau. His survival depended on his brother's forgiveness, 
but he realized that he had no control over Esau's heart. In this vulnerable moment, Jacob recognized the need for God's forgiveness and mercy, acknowledging his own flaws and weaknesses. We, too, must come to terms with our imperfections and understand that forgiveness is a gift from God, not something we can achieve through our own efforts. It is through God's grace and mercy that we find our path to forgiveness and redemption. Secondly, Jacob's struggle with God underscores the value of perseverance in seeking a deeper relationship with Him. Despite the physical and spiritual challenges, Jacob refused to let go until he received God's blessing. This persistence exemplifies both Jacob's spiritual sensitivity and his unwavering determination. Jacob recognized that he was wrestling with God and persevered until he was blessed. In our own lives, it is essential to show this same level of perseverance in our journey with God. It reminds us that God honors our commitment to seeking Him, even in the face of trials and struggles. Our willingness to pursue a deeper connection with God can lead to profound transformation and blessings. Third, Jacob's name change from Jacob to Israel signifies a transformation of character and identity. Jacob's life had been marked by his old name, which meant supplanter or deceiver. However, through his struggle with God, he received a new identity as Israel, meaning a prince who prevails with God and with men. This transformation teaches us that in Christ, we are made new. Our old identities, marked by our past mistakes and flaws, can be replaced with a new identity in Christ. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things passed away, behold, new things have come. We should hold on to our new identity and remember who we are in Christ, even when we make mistakes or lose sight of it. Finally, Jacob's willingness to seek and know God intimately is a reminder of the importance of spending time with God. Jacob asked for God's name, showing his desire to know him on a deeper level. This willingness to engage with God through prayer, reading the Bible, and worship allows us to draw closer to Him. We should strive to prioritize our relationship with God, as this intimacy with Him can bring a sense of peace and guide us through life's challenges. Closeness to God requires humility, and it's a continuous journey that can transform our hearts and attitudes, just as Jacob's encounter with God transformed him. The rising sun as Jacob passed Peniel symbolizes a new beginning and a renewed sense of purpose in his journey. Similarly, in our own lives, spending time with God can bring new hope and direction as we move forward in our faith journey. Jacob's physical disability, a limp from his hip injury after wrestling with God, serves as a symbol of his newfound humility. Humility, defined by Merriam-Webster as freedom from pride or arrogance is a quality that may seem counter to today's culture of self-promotion and success. However, in God's perspective, humility is a virtue that leads to personal growth and transformation. Throughout the Bible, we see God humbling various figures, including Jacob, Simon Peter, and Saul, later known as Paul. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, speaks of a thorn in the flesh, 
That humbled him and served as a reminder of his dependence on God's grace and strength. God's response to Paul's plea to remove this thorn was, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This highlights the idea that our weaknesses and vulnerabilities can become avenues for God's strength and grace to manifest in our lives. Jacob's limp, a physical reminder of his encounter with God, becomes a symbol of his humility and his transformed character. He had transitioned from being a self-sufficient and quick-witted deceiver to someone who acknowledged his dependence on God's grace. In our own lives, humility plays a crucial role in our relationship with God. It involves recognizing our limitations and surrendering our self-reliance. Rather than being a sign of weakness, Humility allows us to receive God's grace and blessings. It is through humility that we become more open to God's work in our lives and are transformed for His purposes. The story of Jacob's wrestling with God also emphasizes the value of persistence in seeking God's blessings. Jacob's wrestling was a catalyst for focusing on God even if he initially resisted it. Jacob's persistence in the struggle brought him a profound blessing and transformation. In our own spiritual journeys, it's important to persevere in seeking God's blessings and guidance, even when it seems challenging or uncomfortable. God may have more blessings in store for us when we engage in this wrestling process, and it is essential not to let go until we receive God's blessing. Furthermore, Jacob's story teaches us that God can use adversity, discomfort, and even struggles to bring about his blessings and transformation in our lives. Sometimes, we need to wrestle with God in prayer, seeking His favor and blessings, even when it appears that God is hesitant to bless us. This wrestling process can lead to profound spiritual growth and a deeper connection with God. In our times of anguish, fear, and uncertainty, we should remember that God's blessings often come when we wrestle with Him in prayer demonstrating our earnest desire to receive his favor. Wrestling with God may not always look the way we expect, but it can be a path to spiritual transformation and an encounter with his grace. Lastly, through Jacob's transformation and the renaming of his identity to Israel, we see the power of God to change our lives and give us new identities in Him. Jacob, who was known for his deceitful ways, became Israel, a prince who prevailed with God and men. Similarly, when we come to know Christ, we experience a radical transformation in our lives. Our old identities marked by sin and brokenness are replaced with new identities as children of God. In conclusion, Jacob's story serves as a powerful reminder that God works through our humility, persistence, and struggles to bless us, transform our character, and give us new identities in Christ. We can learn from Jacob's example and embrace the wrestling with God as a means of receiving God's grace and experiencing spiritual growth. Jacob's story, particularly his reconciliation with Esau and his wrestling match with God, offers valuable lessons and insights for our own lives. 1. Reconciliation and Forgiveness Jacob's reconciliation with Esau demonstrates the power of forgiveness and reconciliation in relationships. 
Despite past conflicts and grievances, Jacob and Esau were able to embrace each other and move forward in peace. This serves as a reminder that forgiveness can lead to healing and restored relationships. Tenacity in pursuing a relationship with God, Jacob's tenacious faith, and his willingness to wrestle with God teach us the importance of persistently seeking a deeper relationship with God. Just as Jacob was willing to wrestle for God's blessing, we should be tenacious in our pursuit of God's presence and favor. Humility and transformation, Jacob's physical disability resulting from his encounter with God, symbolizes his humility and transformation. Humility is a key aspect of our relationship with God, as it allows us to acknowledge our dependence on him. In moments of humility, we open ourselves to God's grace and transformation. Accepting God's blessings in unexpected ways, Jacob's story reminds us that God's blessings may come in unexpected and unconventional ways. God's plans for us may not align with our expectations, but his blessings are worth the struggle and may transform us in the process. Perseverance in faith, Jacob's life was marked by perseverance in his journey of faith. Despite his shortcomings and challenges, he continued to trust in God's promises. In our own lives, we should similarly persevere in our faith journey even when faced with difficulties and uncertainties. The role of God's presence throughout Jacob's life, God's presence was a constant reminder of his faithfulness and promise keeping. God's presence, whether through his word, prayer, or moments of encounter, plays a crucial role in our spiritual journey. Jacob's life is a testament to the transformative power of faith, reconciliation, humility, and tenacity in pursuing a relationship with God. We can draw inspiration from his story to navigate our own faith journeys and relationships, trusting that God's promises are true even in the midst of life's challenges and uncertainties. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.